In this video, I'm going to show you how I freehanded the markings on Jessica Cruz's face. Welcome to that pair of socks that your wife keeps asking you to remove from the bottom of your bed. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted the markings on Jessica Cruz's face. Have to use this thing and I still haven't got a stand for it yet. So we hold it like this now. This is how we roll. A couple weeks ago, I painted Jessica Cruz. You guys really liked that video and you really liked the model on social media as well. So I thought I'd dive a little bit deeper into what I had done on that model specifically. I'm going to go over just the face. It's not going to be a long video, but it's going to be worthwhile if you want to know how I did those 300 markings. At first, I thought I made a plan. I took action. I decided exactly how I was going to go about doing this marking. Essentially, I broke it down into small bits. I broke it down into a circle and then the two bars that go over the top of that circle. So starting off with the circle is going to be the easiest thing. This way I can place this in the center of the eye, make sure that this is in the right place and everything else will fall into place. Before doing this, I had clear coated the skin tones that I had placed down. This way I can rub off fresh paint before it becomes permanent. So I used a really thin version of the paint that I wanted to use in the end. And this is because I can rub this off if I made any mistakes. And slowly but surely, I made the shape of the circle of the eye and I started to build that bigger, thicker, rounder, carving the shape as I went along. Of course it's going to take time to do something like this, but the main thing is to get the shape as close to accurate as you can and slowly but surely you can build on from the shape as you go along. A good trick for freehanding is to make sure that your paint is flowing very well, making sure that the paint was thin enough, that it flowed well enough, but not too thin that it was like a water. Because if it was too thin, it was gonna run into places I didn't want it to go into. But if it was too thick, it wasn't gonna flow as easy and it was gonna make drawing essentially on top of a skin a lot more difficult than it needed to be. I used a really small brush for this just because I didn't wanna have too much paint on the end of my brush and make a mistake and end up blobbing it everywhere. It's going to take longer to work with a thin brush and it's also going to be easier to make uneven patches of paint on the surface. However, I used the thin brush in this case because it was an easy way for me to control the amount of paint I had on my brush. And extremely carefully, I just build this up. You will see me now and then put the brush to my thumb and this is taking the tiniest amount of paint off the brush. This is also checking how the paintbrush is gonna behave when it hits the surface. Um, as you can test that on your thumb, it obviously gives you more of a chance to know exactly how the paint's gonna behave when you take that specific loaded brush and place it against the surface. As you can see, I built layers upon layers of this. In the end it was probably around 4 or 5 layers to get the green that I wanted. This is doing the eyebrows. This was a good time for me to come back and shape the top portion of the symbol where the eyebrow cuts into. And then doing the other eyebrow at the same time. I used then a slightly darker green and I went into the recesses and some of the shadowed areas with this in order to create some depth in the marking itself again making sure this paint is thin I can layer it up bit by bit to make sure that it doesn't overpower the image I also use this to tidy up and crisping the edges of the symbol itself using a slightly darker green than the green that I had originally placed helps to keep things look nice and crisp you can still see me fiddling with the symbol the whole way through I think with freehanding the thing is that you're not going to just paint it directly on you would slowly 
sculpt and shape this item or the symbol that you're freehanding onto the object. So the more time you spend tidying and sculpting, the better your outcome is going to be. The reason why you use a thin layer of paint is so that you can sculpt without having a huge buildup of paint over the surface. And then this is doing the eyes, this is just the iris. I used a really deep brown um, and I ended up building this up to a hazelnut. Place it in both eyes, making sure that she doesn't look squint. And I layered this as well. Even something as difficult as placing the perfect size ball inside of an eyeball, I still will layer something like that as well. Add in a pupil in. And you know I glossed all those eyeballs. The last week has been one of the most eventful weeks for me personally, as I stayed in bed for at least three days with a fever and nearly died. And that's probably the last time I'm ever gonna go and socialize ever again. That being said, I'd like to thank the new patrons that we gained over the last week of my nearly death. Those new patrons are Nicholas Wester and that filthy drummer Phil. I have mentioned this in the Patreon's Discord group before. We are working towards putting some money aside to have a custom sculpt made specifically for our Patreon and this will be a reward which I'll give out as soon as we meet the goals that we need to meet. I hope that the video gave you some insight on how to do a specific technique that you may not have known how to do yet and if it did please be sure to give it a like and the best way to share it amongst your friends is to click the share button copy and paste that little url and send it over to your best bud you know your friend wants to know how to do it and he probably wants his friend to know how to do it too at the same time while you're down there make sure to click the subscribe button and if you really like me that much then probably go and look at the patreon and decide if you want to join our group of I don't know what we're going to call them, but they're there on Discord and we chat every day. After that, there's nothing much else I can tell you other than if you didn't like this video, I'll get rid of the filter and you can just f*** off.